Aye, well, DC fan gives hope. So, and if I haven't said it to you before or whatnot, check out the Facebook page. Okay, DC fan gives hope. That's where I spend a lot of my time. Okay, this is just basically a, a sort of log for myself, sort of diary entry of my thoughts and ideas and stuff. So, I came across this tweet that a guy, uh, J, J. Olivia, or Olive, I'm not sure how he, everybody gets his name wrong, so I've been told by the guy himself in uh, a video I just watched. The reason why I watched that video, well, it's because I came, I came across this wee tweet by him defending Zach, Zack Snyder. He was basically talking about the... Zach's cut and how much of it is it is it done and he basically said 99% so that means it's basically done the film you know is Zack Snyder's film or his cut has been done he's shot it and and I'm thinking and so that's more reason to think it may be released so I'm just after my dinner Trying to get things down the throat. Right. And so I started thinking, but who is this guy really? Who, what connection is he to Zack Snyder? So i had done a wee bit of research. And it turns out to be that um, he storyboarded uh, Man of Steel and um, BVS and stuff. Storyboarded. So he's basically drawn and help Zach make these films so but now also he did um Justice League War right which is like the new 52 with uh, Superman and uh, Batman first me and it's sort of there's homages and BVS you, you may say and stuff like that and oh throughout the, you know um Batman and Justice League as well Batman and the Parademon flying through the air, all sort of homage to to that film, and that film st stood out for me, and the the book stood out for me because it gave me dark side, uh, the way I envisioned them as this big, giant, you know, godlike creature that just kind of floated about in the city, and it was quite strong and powerful, and he had this big deep deep voice and booming and I thought that's it that's it so I get it Jay of uh, gets it and in this wee interview and I'll give you a wee link to before but he's talking about he, he, he has done Marvel films but not as um, but he's more concentrated on DC story and they're just like uh, it's so vibrant and just amazing to watch now you've done a few marvel as well um why why haven't you done another marvel since i would love to see something from you just to give them a little uh well back when i did marvel that was back when it was marvel lionsgate and they had done i don't i forgot how many films but i did like invincible iron man and dr strange oh, which dr strange is great because yeah. now there's a new live action film coming out which is going to be kind of exciting and i think they looked at our movie for some references but after that i think uh, Marvel, Disney didn't want to continue in that kind of, you know, more mature, like, uh, PG-13 kind of route, so, which is why they haven't done it. I mean, I'd love to do, like, you know, what we did in the DC Animated Use for Marvel, you know, do, like, a little bit more PG-13, a little bit more kind of, uh, little feature films. I mean, that'd be great. Well, I'll say right now that I think your tone is superior, and I'll probably get beat up by some Marvel fans out there for saying that, but, um... Well, thank you for that sort of, um... That sort of sums up um, what I've always said, you know, but Marvel, oh, don't go. Uh, see if I can get this. That's what I've always said about Marvel um, movies and how they're trying to reach the, you know, the major audience. But when it came to... When it came to the the animated movies, I I just feel that again DC wins that. 
the the animated ones anytime I watch a, a Marvel animated movie it just feels like something from the 80s so this is where um, Uh, you know what I I hate touch screens. I do. Uh, uh, uh. The slightest touch of your finger. Now people normally, real root YouTubers, will, will basically be using computers and they'll be going like that, click it to click. Okay, no computer. Okay, I have um, an iPad. A wee kind of iPad thing, right? Um, so I was wondering again, who is who is this who is this guy and how close is he to to Zach in order to because the more I looked into it the more he defends Zack Snyder. And I wanted to sort of get a feeling of how close he was. Um favorites, but I mean it's kinda of nice that we have kind of a lot Range of what, what to do for, for the animated films as opposed to just doing straight adaptations all the time. Sure, sure. And with, with uh, Gotham and Gaslight, would that be sort of your like dream project if, if you would? I think so. I mean, that's one of the ones that I. Like, what do you mean? It's me, believe it or not? If I could get to that one day, then I'd totally like direct the hell out of it. Awesome. Well, I, I hope you get to that one day. Um, I just wanted to wrap up with uh, asking you about some of the uh, storyboarding work that you've done, so some recent films. Uh, I know that. Uh, there's a lot of credits that you have, uh, including Man of Steel and uh, the upcoming 300 uh, sequel. So, is there, is there anything about those experiences that you could share with us? Uh, you know, working with Zack Snyder is great. You know, Zack is a, you know, he's a storyteller and he's a very good storyteller. And he's not afraid to, you know, to get get kind of uh, suggestions. So, you know, I mean, I've I've lived with these DC characters for the last like 10, 12 years. And so, you know, sometimes he'll pitch something to me and I'll be like, oh, that's cool, Zach. You know, we kind of did that in the animated version. And then you know, I'll, I'll show him, like, All-Star Superman or something like that. And he'll be like, oh, that's cool. Then, I'll, then, I'll, then we'll go back and forth. And I'll be like, if you want, I'll come with something that I've never done before. And so it's kind of fun. I mean, it's a nice kind of back and forth. And, I mean, he's him and his crew, are, they're just phenomenal. And, and a lot of times, like, I'll just come up with a, a cool sequence, but then I'll leave it in their hands and they come up with something amazing. So. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, I, now, that... That highlights everything that we've thought about Zach, okay, and, and he is a listener, okay, he listens to people's opinions, he listened to Ben Affleck, Affleck listened to Zack Snyder, people respond well to him, not as much as Joss Whedon, Joss Whedon comes on, he's a control freak, but more, a uh, bit like that Brian Singer, there's a bad rep going about him as well and how he handled Man of Steel, but with this guy, he knows he's getting involved with people that have spent 10 years. Okay, let's say, for instance, that he doesn't know comic books. What is he? He does. He does. He does, you know. He knows comic books. He does. He's talking to a guy that's been doing the animated movies for like 10 years. Okay. Um, he not, he's doing the cartoon movies. He's known about them. Okay. So, yes, he likes inputs. Right? He likes to take the inputs in and get a feel for the character. He's listening to somebody that's doing New 52. So maybe the last time Zach had watched a film was before New 52, but now he's listening to New 52 and he's putting a lot of elements in like that in the film. So, uh, hats off to him. And now we've got him defending Zack Snyder on Twitter and everything else. And now I sort of believe... You know, that he's not just, you know, some sort of fan geek out there or something or somebody that in the industry that that will just, you know, like Zach. This guy's been involved with him. He's storyboarded him. He's shared his ideas. He has seen the Justice League. He's mentioned that it's epic. It's, um, you know, and, and he storyboarded it. He wrote, you know, he probably sketched all the great ideas down on a piece of paper and wow he must be gutted for it so he must have been on the set seeing all his sketches come to life he knows that Zack has done justice like he's been there he's i would say he's seen it all that's more evidence 
of not only of its existence, but more likely it is for him again to say that it is possible to get it. Now, we all talk about the hopes and desires of Comic Con and stuff like that. One of my other desires is, is Ben Affleck and Matt Reeves coming onto the stage. Okay, will Matt Reeves appear? Now, a year ago or so, when all that toss and turning was happening, okay, because Ben, uh, they were trying to get a film going. Ben's probably thinking he's fed up with all this palaver and all the stuff he's getting on emails and you know, uh, Bat Affleck and whatnot and stuff. And he's getting sick, he's ready to pull away. He's seen his friend Zach getting hammered by the studios, you know, and he wants to go and do his movie, Batman, and he's, he's getting bogged down by requests while trying to promote his other movie that he wants out there and it's depression. We already know he's, he's you know, he's, his normal life is chaotic. So with all this anti pressure, then he said at Comic Con that he would be an ape in a Matt Reeves movie. Okay, uh, he would be anything. Now, Ben Affleck is a film director. He's done Argo, he's done The Town and stuff like that. You know, he knows how to make decent enough movies. He's a film and he's listened, as I said just earlier, he's listened to Zack Snyder. So he can appreciate someday, like Matt Reeves, coming in spending some time, you know, because that's what Ben Affleck done as well. He took his time with his movie. He had ideas with it. And he said in an interview that he wants to take time and make it right. He doesn't just want to throw it out. No director does. Apart from that hassle that Warner Brothers did give to David Ayer with Suicide Squad, they tried to rush it out. But now Warner Brothers, thank you to Walter Amanda, they want the directors to take the time, okay? They've seen their flaws. So there is still a chance now. Matt Reeves is probably... Uh, there's all this rubbish about him, uh, about who's the villain in it, and oh, it's not right, and they're, they're far away from being anywhere close to having a villain for it, or close to this. Who says that? Okay, clickbait sites is telling you that they're far away. Clickbait sites will tell you that the f it's all written and it's done and it's just waiting. Who knows, but that was all going on since last year. Matt Reeves was trying to finish off his previous films. He's now not, he's now working on Batman. He can do what Zack Snyder did and come on stage. With an actor, like they did with BVS, and then suddenly have a symbol happening behind him. Happening, happening, I'm out of my mouth now. Just happening behind him. Of course, we've all seen the Batman logo. Put a wee twist in it, and that's all you need to show people for them to get excited. The fact that Matt Reeves is there, along with Ben Affleck. Yeah. I think it would be an idiot to bring on somebody new for Batman role. We would have, surely we would have heard something just now. Okay, film, I mean, they knew what was going to happen with Ben Affleck, okay? They sort of knew it and they thought, we'll dish it out just now, get people used to the idea. So if they were going to do that for another Batman, they, I would have really I thought they would have tried something by now, or they would have tried something. Um, but Walter Lamada is in touch with the fans. I believe, my personally believe, right, and he doesn't want to make any mistakes, he's fan of Saxon. So he wants Ben Affleck to stay on. Now, none of this may ever happen at Comic Con. No news may ever happen. We may just get the similarities of uh, an Aquaman trailer and, and stuff. And somebody, say, somebody said to me one time, Oh, they don't want to take, you know, the direction of a Snyder Cut or whatever was going to be mentioned, or a Batman movie, or Ben Affleck was going to be mentioned. They don't want to take the focus away from the upcoming movies. Rubbish! Okay? 
they have a franchise. They, the, the Warner Brothers has a franchise and they want to ensure people that they are going to, you know, that they have got confidence in the industry. And why not just blow our minds by having everybody, um, you know, having Matt Reeves and Ben Affleck on the stage, having Zack Snyder coming down, ha having Dio or Oliver or Olivia, whatever his name is, uh, on stage and yeah, well, why not bring him on stage? He deserves a storyboard in the film, you know. Have him announce the cut of what he drew. And that, my friends, will be the most awesome, awesome Comic Con uh, that the fans have been needing since, since BVS. And will we feel so uplifted and so positive on its future? Thank you. And mind check out my page, DC Fan Gives Hope. Please like, subscribe, and share. But please mind, I'm, I'll probably say one thing that you might not uh, not agree with. Um, but we're only human; we can't agree on everything. But please check the page out for all your positive sort of look at the DC. Yeah.